All right, hey, this is Super Ninja Man with DinosaurWithRobotEye.com, and as you can see, there's an image on my screen, um, or my wings. This is actually a f in game photo of my first ever model after I put on my first ever texture. It is quite the worst. Um, it's actually back from April 2009, so that doesn't sound like too long ago, but it it's quite some time. Um, it was actually really a wasteful model. It ended up taking up like 600 tries, and it was way I was I didn't know anything about what I was doing. Um, so I'm going to show you the methods that I used to make it, and I'm going to show you the proper ways to use them. Um, today's tutorial is going to be over modeling from a photo reference and how to do that. Um, as you can see, um, when you right click, there's going to be two things regarding images. There's image and then there's image plane. Make sure you use image plane because image creates an image. Image plane lets you import a, an image as a plane on your when um, I don't know what the hell to call that, your workspace. Um, Yeah, um, so make sure you have your things selected. You can't see my dialog box that popped up, but it was there. Uh, scale this up and move it back along the X, away from the camera. Because uh, you want to get away from the origin, so that when you're modeling, you don't accidentally, uh, you know, model through the image and end up messing up half your model. It's happened to me plenty of times when I was starting off. Um, just make sure to avoid it. Uh, Shoutouts to Wolffire and their game Overgrowth. That's where this model comes from, or this image of a model. It was uh, it's the Rat Sword. They're the scavenging race, and so it's like spare metal and shit like that. Uh, as you can see, it's not a complete 2D image, but it doesn't matter. We're only using as a blueprint a rough one at that. We're not going to be trying to model it detail for detail. Uh, make sure you lock your image and make sure you're in orthographic and not in smooth shaded view. Smooth shaded, you know, you don't want to model in smooth shaded and orthographic because you're going to be modeling on a 2D plane. Um, you could use 2D images, this one's a 3D render, but you know, it's not necessary. You can, I mean, you can see like the front of the face is on the, I guess, the front of the handle, or whatever. So what you're going to do is, like, with basic cube modeling, you start with the cube, get it sized right, and move it into into a place where you, you know, feel confident to start your model. I think the base of the handle is probably the best, probably my best bet. Right, let's scale it down, and then let's make sure. Um, I was checking the width to make sure it wasn't, you know, too big or too small. Uh, basically, what you're gonna do is kind of with cube modeling or box modeling or subdivision modeling, they're all the same thing. Um, you're going to block out the details, and then you're gonna add fidelity later. And. So just basically, you know, fill in the shape. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm not gonna make it exact, but you know, it's all up to you and how you want the model to look. And it depends on whether or not you're gonna use the photo as a texture. If you're gonna use the base photo as a texture, you're gonna use a little weird methods, a few weird methods to cheat it. Um, I'll show you. I mean, you'll see that I will use them. Um, or it wasn't actually intentionally meant to cheat it, cheat it, but it's a um, you know, it's a way you can, and it's quite effective. I didn't catch it until after, until I was editing the video, and I was like, oh shit, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna add the fidelity to the handle right now into the wood. I'm gonna double the I'm going to essentially uh, double the amount of cuts. No, actually, 
I decided against that because it's more of a rectangular shape, not a um, cylindrical shape. It's kind of a rounded rectangle, re rectangle, rectangle. Um, so I'm gonna end up cutting these sides into, while cutting the um, faces that face or into three, and then the faces that face along the Y in two. That way, you know, the top is more. You know, like, yeah, you'll you'll see what I mean. Um, this vi this audio was done post because I forgot to record it during. Basically, you've seen how to start out because all you basically need to know is how to set up an image plane. And then the cube modeling, which I'm assuming if you've seen this video, or if you're watching this video, you've seen. If not, this is part of a playlist called Wings 3D Tutorials. Go watch the video before this one. It's um, quite handy. It's And it's the foundation of all your modeling skills. So make sure to, you know, treat it right. Hardening the edges right now. Um, I have a tendency to remake models I've made in the past. This is probably my third or fourth remake of this weapon, so I'm pretty familiar with it. Um, so I'm going to add some, you know, flourish to it that's not necessary that you won't have to add or anything like that. It's just, you know, how I do it. Or, you know, I just want to one up myself from 09. I was a junior in high school. I'm one-upping, extremely long-haired me. It's kind of fat back then too. Um, still have the majority of the shirts I wore back then, though. I should probably buy more clothes or new clothes. Uh, <laughs> so, as you can see, I'm starting to rough in the detail of the pommel. I kept calling it butt cap during the video. I was like, oh shit, I should edit that. But then I didn't have to because the audio wasn't even there. I don't know why you shift slide is actually the thing you want to use there. But I'm going to, you know, I'm starting to rough out the details. Ooh, one second. I'm taking a sip of coffee. It's five in the morning. I wish I could be more helpful and, you know, narrate a little better what's going on, but I honestly have no idea. This, I did this two weeks ago. Oh, right now I'm, uh... Do I, I don't know if that's actually curved like that, or if that's part of the, just, you know, how it's a 3D render on a 2D plane. But, I liked it, so I'm going to keep it that way. I'm not going to model in the pyramid caps. I could put down a secondary model, uh, like I'm going to be doing with a blade, and use those as the pyramids, and then, you know, bake the AO onto it and such. But I'm going to be using that thing's texture, so it's kind of pointless for me to do it. I'm going to clean up this, except I end up not selecting all these. See? So make sure when you're cleaning up, just like all the vertices you're trying to delete and you know the first time and don't worry about this ugly modern art style tessellation it's just how wings will do it you you're gonna have to clean it up by hand but it's it's no big chore unless you know you deleted like a few hundred faces in which case you should probably shouldn't have been deleting them all at once like that uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing right here. No hardening edges. Yeah, my second model ever was Soul Edge because I was going on the Soul Calibur kick because I fucking love Soul Calibur. Um.
can actually got a when I posted an image of this originally. I I don't know what Silverfish does for Wolfire. I think he might just be a community guy that they that they got involved somehow. But he, I think, sent John, one of the developers. He's the if you have been following Wolfire or Overworld for a while, he was I think I'm pretty sure that's John, the one who dyed his beard pink for the that bed. He hasn't done any they haven't been doing a lot, but he's he's the voice. I'm not sure what else he does, but he has a good voice, and he's the voice of Wolfire, if you've ever watched there. Um, not their Art Acid overviews, but like their humble bundle videos and such like that. Maybe that's what he's been doing. Maybe that's what he's been up to, and that's why he hasn't done so many overgrowth videos. Anyway, he gave me a shout out. Right now, I'm roughing in the edges where I'm going to be putting in this cross guard. As you can see, like on theirs, it's kind of apparent. That's actually a um, different model intersecting with the wood model, but I try to avoid using secondary models as often as I can. I end up not be able to avoid it on the blade, but that's only because that's the reason I had 600 tries the last time. I mean, the first time I did it, and so I kind of just wanted to avoid that whole situation. Right now I'm roughing in the details, and then I'm gonna add fidelity to fidelity to him. Uh, I'm going to do this thing. It's actually just um, excuse me for style points. I end up making it more rounded than it is. But the way I do it is actually very effective in allowing me to use the, the model, the sides of the model with, that, with minimal stretching on the texture. Usually when you model, usually when you do it and you have a, perpend a face that's perpendicular with the uh, plane that you're working on, like I'm working on the, uh, I guess it's the X, Y plane, anything that's on the Z is extremely, uh, where am I working on the Z, Y plane, whatever. The plane I'm not working on, usually the things that are flat along it will have some terrible, awful stretching. I end up avoiding that situation by doing a technique that I'm going to show you. Uh, it wasn't intentional, but I realized that that's actually a very good use for it. It was just, uh, you know, flourish. hardening edges, I believe. How far away into the video? Well, not too bad. Alright, um... What are some tips that I don't show very well in video? Actually, as you can see, I keep, I keep extruding along the normal, but... The, none of these fall very well on a flat edge, so it's making it very. Oh yeah, I wasn't really sure how that happened. Um, so it kind of makes it tilted, but for what the model is, a uh, piece of wood with metal shoved through it by made by a rat who scavenged it from who knows what. I think it's uh pretty okay that it's ended up like that. I think it's funny that I did all that, and, but I make sure to scale along a proper axis. Uh, make sure you do that, because when I started out, I would just scale along the X with a Y or the Z, but if you scale along an axis you choose, especially since this is those two were made out of cuts and then slid to position, um, you'll end up having to do a lot less tweaking by hand. You want to make sure you want to make your tools work as much for you as you can. Um, I decided I didn't want to toy with it too much, and I was just gonna do that, and I ended up liking it quite a bit. So, remember, block in the detail. Add, I mean, block in, yeah, block in the detail, and then add fidelity. 
and then, if need be, add another layer of fidelity and do as much as needed. And then I realize I don't need to scale the entire edges if I'm just going to do it that way. I did 130% on the bottom, so I'm going to do 130% on the top. And delete those, extrude up along the normal. Yeah, I'm delete all those faces so I don't have to deal with a weird shape. Connect the center vertices to make an edge. Um, and then rotate along. This will help me figure out which. I'm gonna scale. Yeah, I'm scaling right now. Now I'm moving. That's weird. I could just yeah. Okay, I don't want to move along normal because it would end up shrinking the side. So make sure you know, move along axis. That way you won't have to tweak it later by scaling along the x or the z or the y or whatever. I'm trying to figure out what my whatever. Um. There's some extra faces on the pommel, and it's bothering me. <laughs> I need to figure out who on my Steam list is named Based God. Yeah, right now I'm just tweaking and getting it. You know, proper. But you notice how you, you can see the majority of the face that will build up the, you know, face is perpendicular. That helps reduce the stretching on the texture the way I'm going to show you how to texture. Uh, you, if you notice uh, on especially beginner models using photo textures, there's a lot of stretching and a lot of weird shit going on. And that's because um, the perpendicular face, they don't really map it to a right position or something like that, and they just, meh. I'm not sure what I was doing there. I think I was just checking out the angles and making sure the smoothness looked fine. I'm going to do the hard edges, because if you don't do the hard edges as you go, it ends up being a daunting task at the end if you have a high poly model. Um, and this is probably one of the higher poly models I've done in the past months, years even, because I don't like working in high poly. No poly's away from me. <laughs> That's why Mountain Blade modding is my bread and butter. I, I don't work in super low poly like mobile games or you know the Total War series but I don't work in high poly like modern FPS's I mentioned making an armor tutorial following the tutorial after this one, which I don't really recall what it was. Which one I was going to make after this one. I think it was going to be a helmet. No, this is a basic Wings tutorial series, isn't it? Um, the fuck was I going to do? I'm sure it's written down on one of my lists somewhere. Um, but, yeah, like I said, I have to make sure I haven't lost so much skill that that's no longer possible. But I make a perpendicular face here. Actually, perpendicular to the camera. But it's uh, not really a problem because I I don't I have a decently clever way of getting around it. Basically, I mean, like I said, you're just using this as a rough blueprint does have to be exact. Uh, if you want it to be exact, that's cool. Um, I like my stuff to be exact, too. If you don't want it to be exact, uh, it's also fun. Um, if it's exact, people will call you out on it <laughs> more often than not. 
uh, I've noticed. Especially if you use the photo texture or the texture of the reference image. Uh, metals that are pre-rendered or ha or the photo was taken with a flash, uh, those make awful photo textures. Um, small resolution images scaled up to make high resolution images without any clear without you clearing it. Um, and a photo editing software also make terrible image uh, photo reference or photo textures. So make sure to look out for those if you're going to be using your whatever I'm doing right here. Uh, your photo reference as your texture. Honestly, if I were you, I would avoid using it because it's mostly a crutch, but it's a useful tool to have in your bag if you're in a hurry or if you're just trying to get the look done. Like, uh, like you have to present, but you don't have a texture ready. You can just slap it, slap it on top of an image. As long as there isn't like you know, pre-rendered shine or whatever, it'll look fun. <laughs> also, on the subject of texturing, if I were you, I would try to learn a photo editing software as soon as you can, because you're going to be doing it a lot. Uh, don't rely on other texture artists, because, I mean, you'll find, especially when you're starting, there'll be a bunch of other people starting, there always is, and they'll offer to do textures for you, and that's cool, but people on forums tend to disappear as quickly as they came. I've been on the Tail World forum since oh nine, and I've disappeared for maybe nine months to a year at a time. And I come back, do some stuff, disappear again. The yeah, same if you're starting your first mod. Uh, this I guess I'm supposed to be doing wings, but I'm gonna be talking about Mountain Blade because that's what I know. Um, and that's where most of my viewers come from anyway. Anyway, uh, you'll get a bunch of people who are like, yeah, man, I'll help you out on your team. Or they'll ask to be on your team or something like that. Uh, be wary, not weary. Like, they're going to rob you or something. But don't try to rely on people so much, too much, because uh, they come as soon as they go. And, man... From personal experience, trying to run mod team is like trying to wrinkle cats. And you ask for their progress, you have to wait a week to get a progress report, and then you find out they haven't done anything. And then they do a bunch of crap, but then it's subpar. And you can't really be like, hey man, your shit sucks, because I mean they're helping you out, you're not doing them a favor. But also, I, I wouldn't shy away from a team if, you know, they're trustworthy. I need, I need myself to scale that down. That looks awful. Come on, guy. Do it. You want to. Oh, fuck, I'm cold. <laughs> This post thing was a terrible idea. 24 minutes in, I believe this is a 40 minute video. I'm sorry about how awful this commentary is this time, because it's not supposed to be commentary, <laughs> it's supposed to be a, a walkthrough, but this is how it fell. Alright, um, I'm making my mesh flow better in games and renders, you want to make sure your mesh flow is you know, pretty clean and pretty consistent because you know they use, like some things use vertices in the renders, um, most things do. I don't know why I said some. 
And like in Mountain Blade, once you, oh my gosh, I have to go and fix that because that's gonna bother the shit. No, do you want it? It's the front hand thing. I don't want to fix it. This is just for the tutorial. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's bothering me. So it's always good to go back a few weeks later and look at your models because you'll find things with them like I'm doing now. Um. I actually really like the blade width I use. I, as you can see, I'm using a secondary cube because I really didn't want to screw up anything. I'm going to scale it and then rotate it, I believe. What was I saying? Uh, I can get modding tips. Um, yeah, don't, don't shy away from getting a team, but don't rely on a team of, especially of fresh recruits. Because they, they might come in with a bunch of good ideas. And they might have some skills, but you know, if they're if they don't have roots, they might as well. I mean they might just blow away. My roots, I mean like they don't have a reason to stay at the forums. Or wherever you're meeting them, or getting them or whatever the fuck. Like Mod D B or you know, or maybe you're not even a modeler. Maybe you, maybe you're not a modder. I mean, maybe you're just a guy needs some tips on some wings 3Ds. In which case, um, thank you for watching my video. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't do it on both sides yet. Oh, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, because it's kind of it's kind of L shaped right there, the blade, and I didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, but rotating a uh, rotate along a point is a very useful tool to have in your. A little toolbox because actually knowing the secondary and tetraries that's the right word cool um, functions of every common thing you use like extrude rotate scale move is extremely important not extremely important but it's mildly important to uh, understand that way if you need to use the those features, you know, you've already got them down and you know, you get to make your tools work for you rather than you work around the tools weaknesses or perceived weaknesses. Like when I started I didn't I, I did a bunch of weird shit. Like the way I did things because uh I wasn't really sure how to make you know, I wasn't really sure how to delete vertices or something like that. Um, my throat's really dry. Uh, like that's move along axis. I would have moved it by hand and then that edge wouldn't be flat anymore and it would just ruin everything. Probably shouldn't have moved along normal there, but it worked out. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you should challenge yourself to use features of the tools that you use commonly in ways that you've never used them before. That way, you know, when it's when that feature of your tool is needed, you know what you're doing and you don't end up wasting a bunch of time, you know, tweaking when it could have been something that you could have done right off the bat. No, what are you doing? Oh, I don't want that. <laughs> See that, uh, I don't want that try going all the way to the end with me. No, we'll move it back a little bit. 
that I'll move this along. Yeah. Yeah, see, if when I made this model initially, I didn't use those extra features. I just did it, and it came out pretty awful. <laughs> so, try to challenge yourself to use more of the secondary and tetrary features as you can as much as you can because they're they're there for a reason they're not there just because the coder wanted to see if he could do it they're there because someone either requested them or the person who knew what they were doing when they were making it you know needed it Same goes for many other modelers, but I mean, the more advanced the modeling program, the more extra features they have that aren't really necessary. Like I know people use Blender, and they probably don't use but one eighth the features. No, yeah, because there's a lot of crap, and you don't need it all. Like this one's starting primitives. You don't need all those damn primitives. You just need a cube, and you need a cylinder. That way you don't have to edit your cube so much. But it's good to have them around if you do need them, and it's good to know how to use them if you do need them. But for the most part, you won't need them. Oh, that's weird that it's up there. That other side is tessellated. It's all triangulated. And that's the model. Uh, yeah. Pretty impressive, huh? It's actually really good. I'm quite happy with it. As you can see, it's my YouTube better. I'm not sure. I'm going to show Yeah. Oh, I'm going to show you how to UV it. Um, basically, you just color. Don't use feature projection. Don't use projection normal. Basically, color the faces facing. Okay, feature detection worked perfectly on that one. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna basic UV it, and then apply the images UV. I mean material to it, and then go back to your UV map and then scale it to it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna end up reusing this. I think. But so if, as you can see, it's scaled weird. That's because textures in 3D need to be a uh, square of two. So 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 5, 12. Yeah, because it's 10, 24, um, 2, 48, et cetera, et cetera because you know it helps I mean there are like modern game engines I hear so much don't need it uh, I can't remember what I was reading it was something on probably on the valve dev wiki um, the source dev wiki or whatever but if I recall or maybe it was the uh, unreal one because I was trying to learn how to map Unreal for Killing Floor. But Unreal is so weird, man. Like, source and this shit, and it's additive. You add in cubes, and you do it that way. Unreal is subtractive. Is that the word? Yeah. Um, basically, you put down a primitive, and it carves the primitive out of the void. It's a really badass way to put it, <laughs> but it's uh, so it was hard to get used to, and so I never got used to it. But I think maybe it was their forums. Yeah. Uh, anyway, some textures don't need to be multiples of two, but the computer runs it much more efficiently, and especially if the that texture is also a square, like. 1024 by 1024 or 512 by 512. You know, you could make it 512 by 1024. Uh, recently, uh, I re 
really wanted. I I hope it's Xenoarg on the Tail Worlds forum made a series of models, or he didn't make series of models. Uh, there were Wings models, but textured a series of models using a texture atlas, and his texture atlas was just like 124 by 512. I'm pretty sure it was a rectangular one. Um, and his concern was he was doing a texture atlas because uh, that way the GPU wouldn't have to process a bunch of different textures at once. But, yeah. Anyway, got way the fuck off topic, didn't I? Um, more efficient to do squares, I believe. Anyway, um, you're going to have to scale it because it squashed. You should... But it should match up pretty well if you followed it pretty, like, exactly. You don't always have to scale. You can move along axes. I mean, you can move things, you know, by hand. Tweak it. Which is fine. I tweaked, uh, I mean, you saw my katana texture, I mean, my katana texturing part that I like to, I mean, I tweaked the shit out of mine. Uh, some people, uh, from what I can see, avoid the crap out of tweaking, but it really, it fixes things. You can see the stretching right there. And that's from how small I made that face, even because the face is actually really quite large. Um, vertically. I shrunk it down to make it very small vertically to fit. And that's what I was fixing right there. I ended up grabbing one side, or one thing's face instead of all of them. I also ended up grabbing all those uh, all of those off to the side without catching it. Oh, nope, there I did. I caught it. Um, and this will help reduce the stretching. You want to make sure not to compress the faces too much, because that will cause stretching. And that's why the uh, perpendicular faces have so much stretching. You know, if you do it in the traditional manner. Because, you know, you don't have the perpendicular faces to do it off of. But uh, when you're UVing to make it to do this, you can really pretty much just select the. Yeah, see all that ugliness? That that wouldn't happen if I hand painted it because I would have tied those seams together. But I just kind of stuck it in the middle. But if when you're UVing it, I think I do on this one. You can basically go into the Y and select one half, paint it yellow, select the other half, paint it orange, and then select the faces facing perpendicular. Like, I, I think I go to projection, I realize that the projection is retarded. Then I go to feature detection, the feature, de de uh, feature detection is also equally retarded. Yeah, see. I never understood how it gets its feature detection, because its features are never the features I want it to be. Maybe it's for facial things, but... Basically, color one half one color, one half the other color. All the perpendicular faces that aren't that don't have a scene running through them, like this one right here, you can see it on the front and on the pommel, and then on that uh, bottom part of the cross guard. You want to select those and make those a different one, and then you're gonna apply those to some random part. I apply them to uh, that really rusted out pyramid section of the pommel. You know, but it actually ends up looking okay, I think. Uh, but the because the perpendicular faces would have stretching if you kept them, if you could find a way to keep them part of the rest of them or part of one of the halves. I mean, there's obviously a way I could I could figure out I can break anything hard enough to make it work. Um, Yeah, but be, this is one way you could do it if you're working from 2D. If you're, you know, it's actually probably one of the more efficient ways to do it if you're going to be doing it off 2D. Then projection camera because the camera's on the X, but then I was like, never mind, that's stupid. And I go to projection normal because the normal will be on the X axis because all the faces average out to be on the X. You know, apply the material to it, the image material. Move all these guys to the center, rotate and make them fixed, scale them, 
put him on a pyramid. <coughs> I apologize. Um, yeah, I figured that part would be the best because the AAO on it would help cover up the stretching from the uh, places that aren't predict uh, whatever are perpendicular. I've always liked the weird effects that come from doing shit like this. Like how it was just kind of on things and there's so there's like an image of a sword. I think I've always really liked that. See, and that ended up a lot better. That actually ended up quite perfect. I just have to flip it and then scale it. If you want to, you can actually edit the I would edit the image plane myself. I mean, if I thought about it, but I wanted to go from the exact image I started with th four years ago. We're nearly done here. I couldn't figure out why it was just slightly off scale wise. Like, nothing else was wrong with the. Like, they were perfect. Except one was like 91% the size of another one. And then find some features to match up like that. And then something along the center. Or as close to center as you can. And then it doesn't matter if it's smaller than it, because, I mean, you want it to fit, so it should be a little smaller. And then there's your complete. And that stretching will make it look like it, I mean, it'll make the mirroring work. And, I mean, as you can see, there's some, I highlighted right here, there's some gray, but, I mean, for a first pass, on using a, my photo reference as my texture, it's pretty decent, it actually looks pretty okay. Um, I obviously wouldn't release it in this, but me four years ago would have, and, hey, it doesn't look half bad. So, that's how you do it. That's how you use the photo reference. That's how you make work from a photo reference. And uh, this has been Super Ninja Man with DinosaurTheRobot.com. And see you next tour.